Lung cancer is the leading cause of cancer-related deaths in Colorado, but a new report from the American Cancer Society shows recently it's especially affecting young women. Dr. Pyle Poli joins us now to talk about these new findings. I'm first of all surprised of the high rates of lung cancer compared to other cancers. That just seems really odd. And then young women? Yeah, you know, when you think about lung cancer, for the longest time we thought about an older smoker right. and a male, right? But now what we're seeing is that the face of lung cancer is changing. It's, it's younger individuals, it's women, and it's non-smokers. And unfortunately, and for reasons we don't completely understand, the gender gap seems to be widening. So lung cancer-related death in men is going down substantially, whereas in women, it's really, really increased over the past few years. And so for the first time in history, there's more lung, lung cancer in young women than in men, and lung cancer-related deaths are the leading cause of cancer death in women, more than ovarian breast and colorectal cancer. Wow, but incredible to hear, but is there any background, any biological explanation for why women and then why now, if this is just kind of coming to the forefront? You know, we're still scratching our heads about it. Some of it could be potentially behavioral. So we know that women generally start smoking later in life than men. So could it be that they're more susceptible as they're later along in the course of their lives? We know that women, when they started smoking more women, they were filtered cigarettes and that can change the way that the carcinogens distribute into your lungs. So it could potentially be more carcinogenic because of that. And then, of course, the biological differences, the estrogen could potentially make the same toxins more carcinogenic for women. But notably, 20% of lung cancer in women is non-smoking related. Mm. So we know that it's more than just the cigarettes. It could be environmental exposure, air pollution, many of the ways that our body reacts to a lot of those toxins. It's terrifying. It is. And we hear about air pollution. That's something we hear a lot, a lot about in Colorado as well. Are there symptom differences between a man and a woman? Uh, and you what know, are they? The symptoms most commonly in lung cancer can really sneak up on you. So it can be sort of nonspecific fatigue, a little bit of weight loss, perhaps a cough, a little more shortness of breath, which you could, you know, chalk up to deconditioning or what have you. The difference between men and women is that, you know, women generally have more subtle symptoms. And so sometimes they can be ignored longer, both by the patient and by physicians and providers, because it's not so obvious. Because like I said, women don't usually seem to be the face of lung cancer. And you touched upon air pollution, but what else? I mean, what other things are risk factors that we need to be looking at? I think smoke? we need to start looking past the cigarettes. And I think that's really what this type of study raises awareness of. It's more than just cigarettes, but it's also marijuana. It's also mm -hmm. radon. It's also environmental exposure like asbestos and air pollution, all the other things. And it may even be recovery after viral infections. And so immune responses that persist in the lungs, because our lungs is sort of our first gateway to the rest of the environment. And any little pollutants in the air, any, any reactions, inflammatory reactions that happen can really happen without us realizing. So then if you are thinking you might be exposed and you think about screening, who, who should be considering asking their doctor about that? You know, if you're a smoker, past or present, that's a no-brainer, 50 to 80. I think it's time for us to start really pushing that envelope given these types of data, younger people, non-smokers, women, where we start now screening non-smoking related people. And, and the first one that comes to mind obviously is family history because that's such a strong risk mm -hmm. factor. Your genetics really sets you up. But I would say we need to start going even beyond that and start thinking about people who live in densely populated areas, people who may have more occupational exposure or environmental exposure, really start to revise our guidelines for screening. And we can just go to our GP, right? We don't need to go uh, to a specialist or anything like Absolutely that. Absolutely not. Okay. Yeah, and, and most Good of the know. times it's what's called a low-dose uh, CT scan. So like low-radiation dose lung CT can pick up even tiny little nodules and stuff. Wow. A lot of us, by the way, have nodules. Um, many of us are walking around with those. Those can be signs of healed infection. So not every little ditzel in your lung is lung cancer, but it is important to ask these questions of your doctor. Yep. Okay, that's good advice. Thank you, Dr. Coley.